So, I'm not here to talk about myself today. I haven't accomplished anything in particular. I'm not an inventor, I'm not a director, I don't have a Guinness World Record. In fact, I'm feeling a little bit insecure being up here amongst all these amazing speakers. I haven't started any type of following, even though I would like to introduce you to face stacking. Face stacking is about piling a bunch of stuff on someone's face while they're sleeping, and the more you can get on their face without them waking up, the better. So go out and try it. I don't have a profound story for you of how I found meaning through my journeys through Africa. <laughs> my mother was wrong all those years. I'm not a special snowflake. And as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the preordained son of God. I'm also not here today to tell you how to become a better human being. In fact, I prefer you stay just the way you are. What I am here today to talk about is ordinary people. Ordinary people with ordinary lives creating change for themselves and for others using the power of online video. So, who are the influencers in this digital age? Are they still the high-profile political figures, rock stars, Hollywood celebs? Or has time changed? Now, I would like to remind you of something, and it's something worth reminding. And I know we don't need another motivational speech, but you are the influencers of today. Or should I say you could be? And never before in human history has this been more accessible to the everyday man. Now, the world's not in a great state at the moment. The impoverished continues to rise. Natural disasters continue to devastate. Wars continue to break out. And more Justin Bieber lookalikes get born and adored every day. <laughs> now, as you can see from the juxtaposition of those images of YouTube videos, those are not videos of despair. Those are videos of the human spirit, of our connectedness, of people rallying together, raising awareness, showing the realities of situations. And I would argue it's this human spirit and this humanity that's made online video and YouTube in particular into the global phenomenon it is today. YouTube as a platform serves over one billion people a month. That's one in every two people on the internet, with over 100 hours of video content being uploaded every minute. It's really hard to fathom. Recently, it was announced that 40% of all the views that happen on YouTube happen on a mobile device. And as you can imagine, this bears significant consequence for us being on the African continent and the mobile device being our access point to the internet. Online video and YouTube in particular has become the lens into the soul of humanity. I'll say that again. Online video and YouTube in particular has become the lens into the soul of humanity. Now, I know that's quite a broad stroke, but if you think about it, people have let complete strangers into their daily lives, their joys, their struggles, all captured as long-lasting memory via online video. This digital memory bank carries with it our human footprint. And who's to say that in the future, we don't write down our historical archives, rather we, we sort them via YouTube playlists. Now, one thing I will say is that if online video is the window into the soul of humanity, then we all have some serious issues and should seek counseling immediately. I mean, come on, the Harlem Shake. Gather a bunch of people in close proximity together, put in some electro music that not even the Germans would endorse, dress up in all sorts of weird and wonderful things, and any kind of dance move goes. With over 40,000 spoofs and 700 million views worldwide, we all thought this was a good idea. Glozell, this is an example of YouTube rewarding excellence. Get a bunch of cinnamon, chuck it in your mouth, shake it around, and try not to, cho to, to choke to death. With over 33 million views and 2 million subscribers to our YouTube channel, people seem to like this. <laughs> twerking, right? Now, I'm not even going to attempt to describe what twerking is, so rather, I'll read you the Wikipedia entry. Twerking is a type of dancing in which a dancer, usually a woman, shakes her hips in an up-and-down bouncing motion, causing the dancer's buttocks to shake, wobble, and jiggle. According to the Oxford Dictionary, to twerk is to dance to popular music in a sexually provocative manner, involving thrusting hip movements and a low squatting stance. Now, the origins of twerking are unknown, but apparently it does come from African tribal dancing, so congratulations, Africa, for giving this gift to the world. 
So it seems that the deranged and the absurd and the weird and wonderful are thriving via online video. Why video and why now? I would argue, through the power of sight, sound, and motion, we've given our hidden quirks and our twerks a new voice, or rather a form of expression. And due to the scale that the internet affords and our connectedness, or should I rather say our related anonymities, we have embraced. And without us consciously revealing it, we have liberated our collective idiosyncrasies, our funny bits, our human funny bits, <laughs> the stuff that makes us imperfectly similar. Now, yeah, I know what you're thinking. I also thought the same thing. Now, not only are we liberating our funny bits, we're doing this at record speeds. And how could I talk about online video without mentioning the juggernauts of 2012 and 13, which was Gangnam Style? Imagine 10 years ago you said to me, Jared, there's going to be a Korean pop star. He's going to release a single that the Western world's going to adopt, but they won't understand three quarters of what he's singing about. He actually is going to be singing about the high-end lifestyles of Koreans in Seoul. His horse-riding dance is going to become synonymous with people from the four corners of the globe. And his music video is going to be seen by over one billion people in a very short space of time. Well, my response to you would have been something I can't actually mention on stage, but it probably would have gone along the lines of, I'll have whatever you're smoking. <laughs> well, this in fact did happen in the previous biggest video, which was Justin Bieber Baby, it took two and a half years to get to 759 million views, where Gangnam Style took four months to get to one billion views. In his follow-up single, Gentleman, it took four days to get to 250 million views. The speed in which we're sharing and consuming content continues to accelerate, and we're certainly not seeing the slowdown. Now, thankfully, due to the compensatory nature of the collective human psyche, we do have those on YouTube contributing towards development and progress, and not necessarily robbing us of our human dignities. I joke there, I actually loved all the stuff that I've just mentioned. I'm just trying to sound a bit smart. <laughs> Take, for example, Two Minute Physics, with over a million subscribers to their channel, distilling very complex ideas into two-minute bite-sized videos that anyone could consume. The Khan Academy, well-cited, with over a million subscribers teaching people from basic addition to advanced mathema mathematics and science. Learning channels, fashion channels, guitar channels, cooking channels, DIY, you name it. Anything that someone wants to learn, there's someone on YouTube teaching it. And it's, and it's changing the education and the learning paradigm as we know it. As the internet becomes more accessible and ubiquitous, which it's doing at a rapid rate, so too education is going to move online, and in particular to online video. People are going to be able to be exposed to information and knowledge and develop skills that they would never otherwise have the opportunity to. And as you can imagine, this is going to have a really positive impact on humanity. So, what of Africa? Do we see the same global trends playing out here? Do we have success stories? Well, certainly we do. Take, for example, Peter Carvel from Pretoria, his channel's called The Six Pack Factory. He lost 100 kilograms doing a home ab exercise workout with over 80 million views to his channel. His main audience is from the United States and India. He earns between 50 to 100,000 rand a month of his YouTube channel alone. Mdoom Tuli from Mdu Comics. <laughs> you guys know Mdu, right? It's absolutely hilarious. Now, Jesus is Shangan. It's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. Now, Mdu learned how to animate on YouTube. He tried his luck in the corporate world, it didn't quite work out, and in the last-ditch effort, he dumped his cartoons onto YouTube. And without him knowing or intending, people really liked his stuff and they shared it. And today he has a very successful YouTube channel and is a well-sought-after illustrator. Martin Lawton, 10 years in IT consulting, got retrenched during the recession, very passionate about solar power and DIY, and started posting videos to his YouTube channel. After a year, he was financially independent for him and his family, he now lives in the States where he's on a very well-known electronic podcast and he's about to start his own eco and learning center in, in the United States. Now these are South African examples, but we see the success stories happening across Africa. Noel Tejon, an aspiring journalist from Togo, would go out and interview people and put his interviews on YouTube, on his channel, and he used this as his portfolio to get the current job he has today, which is a global correspondent for The Citizen. Olise Asuf. In the, in the 
in the internet cafes late at night, he was learning how to do film editing. And today, he runs his own video and film production company employing over 10 people and is very successful. Just a band from Kenya, fusing electronic influences they found on YouTube with traditional Kenyan sounds. Initially, they were rejected by the Kenyan populace, and they posted their videos onto YouTube. Today, they have a very strong Kenyan following, as well as a following from France, Germany, United K the United Kingdom, and United States, of which they travel overseas and perform. Again, these are just ordinary people putting themselves out there and creating change. So, who's listening? Well, I get this question a hell of a lot, and before I answer it, I'd like to take us back to where we are today in terms of media and content consumption. Media and content is the most fragmented it's ever been, and this is largely due to technology and being able to distribute content across multiple networks and platforms at a cheaper cost. Now, if you go into the history of media, it kind of goes something like this. Content was distributed across what we call closed systems, closed systems with limited shelf space. And these closed systems have what we call gatekeepers. And gatekeepers would bring content and eyeballs together. Now, translated, that means we used to have one, two, four, five, 10, 50 channels of content that we would consume, but not necessarily content that we would have otherwise chosen to consume. Now, if you believe that human interests are infinitely fragmented, yet we have the situation of limited shell space, clearly there's a disparity. And I would argue that the internet and online video has not changed our consumption patterns. It's merely exposing these infinite interests that have always existed. So, who's listening? This is one such example I really like to cite because it's really funny. I was working with Big Brother Africa and getting their content onto YouTube, and I went into the analytics to see which was the most interested country for their content. You'll never guess which one it was. Saudi Arabia. <laughs> right? Same reaction as, as you I had, so I filed an analytics bug. Something must be wrong. The guys got back to me and said, no, this is correct. So I had to dig a little deeper. Well, what are the kind of videos that do really well with Big Brother and Big Brother Africa content? Shower hour, Shower hour and the steamy stuff. Saudi Arabia, steamy content. Ah, light bulb, kind of made sense. More of a PG example would be Nollywood. The Nigerian Hollywood, Nigeria being the third biggest content producing country in the world. Nigeria's success and the mainstay of Nigeria's success on YouTube, Nollywood success rather, is from a large diaspora from the United States and the United Kingdom. And you don't really have to look any further than the interests of a global audience for weird and wonderful things than the Antwort, <laughs> right? Now, who's influencing? And it's kind of the crux of why I'm here today talking to you. And this is when I had that penny dropping moment and really got me thinking, and it's a story I'd like to share with you. We were working with the Nelson Mandela Foundation where we wanted to promote a video to get people to pledge 67 minutes of their time on his birthday for good. And we got the likes of Morgan Freeman, Bill Clinton, Richard Branson, the Dalai Lama, Desmond Tutu, all to be part of this video that we would promote, as well as ask them to promote this on their platforms themselves. Then we asked this kid. Anyone know who that is? That's Casper Lee. He's an 18-year-old kid from Neisner. He's one of those Justin Bieber lookalikes I was mentioning earlier. He has 1.5 million subscribers to his YouTube channel, and we asked him to do the same. So, who do you think drove the most pledges and the most traffic to our website by a metric mile? Casper Lee did. And that's when the penny dropped, and I was like, well, who are the influencers in this digital age? Are they the high-profile people that we hear of and see on TV and hear on radio? Or are they the 18-year-old kids from Neisner living in the digital domain? Well, I think that day my, my question was answered. Now, I know I hate it, and I'm sure you do too, when you hear these speeches and these talks about people saying, follow your dreams, follow your passions. <laughs> what about the majority of people who don't know what those are? What about the majority of people who live with fear and anxiety and aren't sure whether that's a result of poor parenting or indigestion? <laughs> I'd like to say today, don't follow your dreams. That's tiring, it's heroic, and frankly, it puts people off. What I'd like to say today is be ordinary, be you, be authentic, be real, be stupid, be deranged, be vulnerable, 
Be funny. But most importantly, don't be afraid to show it. Now, the order of the day is creativity. And I'm not going to harbor on the point, but I will mention that being creative is not as grand an idea as the connotation of the word suggests. And I'd like to refer back to the late Steve Jobs as the best quote I've heard on creativity. Creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw something. It seemed obvious to them after a while. That's because they were able to connect the experiences they've had and synthesize new things. Now, I'd encourage you all to, firstly, it's very hard to connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots in your life looking backwards. And I would encourage you all to take a moment to reflect on how you got to where you are today. And maybe with a sense of belief, faith, destiny, karma, your gut, whatever you want to call it, you are here today for a particular reason. And hopefully with a bit of luck and a bit of patience and a bit of time, an image will appear. And we all know the images that are most worthwhile are the ones that are captured. And how fortunate we are today that all you need now is a camera. Thank you.